So what's left to say? I will do my best. But if I can already tell you that it will be very different, not because I'm very different, I come from a very different field, but because I like to be different. Yeah? So you will see different angles and uh, hopefully at the end, it will all come together. Even some of the answers to the questions we just had in the last 10 minutes. Okay, so here is a brief outline of, uh, we hope, four parts. I will talk about two models, an alpha conceptual model and a Herman spoke model. So I have widened the title, but I did not insert a technical title like some others. Then I will talk about those lexica that you've just seen a few uh, screenshots of and how we try to digitize them and turn them to a, to a digital database. And if all goes well, you will also see how far we are in a live demo together with David Joplin, who is so the person who's always helping. Uh, it helped make my dreams. So this first part is a bit longer, but I think you need to get into it to understand why some of the things we plan to do are a bit more complex than they seem at first sight. An alpha conceptual plus, actually, alpha conceptual plus model. Now, first the basic terms, but uh, I feel you need to you know them: semantological versus onomatopoeic diction. Now, for a long time, the principle of alphabetization has gone hand in hand with the understanding of lexicography. Yeah? Uh, even the first dictionary, the table alphabetical, over 400 years ago, had it in its title. And because it was new, it had to be explained. This is the old English, where uh, he explained that you must know or learn first the alphabet, in other words, the order of the letters, and then he explained what it means, the order of the letters. This was new 400 years ago. Now, in many published words, the definition of diction continues to be found inseparable from the term alphabet. Also, for example, in Jackson's uh, manual, ask anybody for a definition of the word dictionary and the term alphabet. So most likely feature in Quoting the Collins Pocket English Dictionary, a book of automatically listed words in the language with and so forth and so forth. And those dictionaries are indeed A to Z lists. So alphabetical arrangements clearly have advantages as long as it's truly strictly alphabetical. Once it's phonemic, it becomes problematic. It is easy to learn. It's just alphabetical progression. Um, it is mostly used for decoding purposes, but as Bachmann pointed out, users often need to encode and then an alphabetical listing is more difficult. Now, some people have hypothesized, dreamed about transforming the semantological approach into an onomatological law. So, what is that? It is when you go from word to an ID. Here you have a few of the lexicographies you have argued for that. It is also known as the topical tradition. And actually, that topical tradition is much older than the alphabetical one, as you can see in this quote from Hulin. Yeah? And she says that it is high time that non alphabetical dictionaries should at least regain their history. Now, semiological um, is very accessible, but actually, a lot of information is. Think of the Bantu languages where we are forced to put. Uh, nouns and verbs very far apart, even if uh, they have the same root. Um, Erdan, the great American lexicographer, uh, thought we had to be more resourceful in designing access routes to the data. And he came up with this list. Uh, and these are types of access routes these days alphabetical, chronological, an index, thematic. That's the focus of today, rhyming, etymological, or structured like in a Rogers thesaurus. Now, Kavalia, or some of whom may know Theo Kavalia, he works in Uganda uh, and has MA studied that Rogers thesaurus, and he actually proved that even Rogers thesaurus relies heavily on the alphabetical index to be accessible. And it uses numerical codes, so if you want. Uh, Corey Father and the Truthful Math and the Dictionary, you actually have to go to a cluster uh, which has a big topic titled Insanity. And then, together with 750 other words, you will find some info on math. So, good luck with that. 
Now, people have, of course, realized that if you go to the electronic format, uh, for the physiological possibilities uh, become a reality. Uh, right. Advantages to using an also nice, sorry, phonological approach. Um, one of them being that you can search basically the microstructure of all the entries, say that uh, these uh, similarly again commands embark, initiate, instigate, institute, all have the word start in their definition by searching start you end up with all these other entries as well. Okay, so these are the two concepts we need to keep track of as we go forward. Now, if we look now at uh, the African and more specifically the Bantu language markers uh, for semi-zoological dictionaries, we see that unfortunately most African language dictionaries are A to that list to this day. There are exceptions for Central and South Africa where thematic approaches are more popular. In my anime in 99, I, for example, showed that for Chiluba, a quarter of them were actually thematic dictionaries. Uh, dictions of synonyms, dictions with just linguistic terminology, economics, classifications, hygiene, drug science, and education. Often, if we move uh, from Central Africa to South Africa, uh, they are also illustrated, uh, built around illustrations. We have an example of a multilingual one with all these languages that are listed, most of the official South African ones, and then also Oxford University Press's first bilingual series. And even a hybrid one by London, popular in South Africa. Now, take that last one. Eh, what is it? It has pictures made to that. It has two indexes, eh, one for each language. So we have in the end four approaches, four access routes to the same data, which is just cumbersome. But that is, of course, the result of the limitations of the paper format. Eh, you can only present so much on a single page, only so much. Uh, uh, into being invented in terms of creative search groups. Um, the Great Lakes region, uh, Kavali again, he has for his MA developed such a type of dictionary and he used the biological taxonomy to organize his data. Uh, departing from that dictionary for Uganda, monolingual one by Chiinji, and using Super kingdom, kingdom, island class, all the family genus, and, and of the species. He hoped that it would, it would be possible to do away with an index because everyone knows that. When he then tested his prototype picture, he realized that no one knows it, so it is as useful as uh, the other thematic pictures without the index. So it would be a taxonomy or no, scientific taxonomy. And then a similar approach was used by uh, Yoweri Museveni for Runyan Kode Otiga. I don't know if you know, but actually Museveni, the president of Uganda, is in depth <laughs> and accomplished lexicographers. Uh, in one of the last years he did for Nina's Dictionary on Musoga, he proved himself a worthy lexicographer. And uh, one day at Euralex in 2010, I'm talking to Princess Beatrix and the Queen of the Netherlands. She also said I knew about lots of colleagues in West Africa, uh, so royals for her my colleagues uh, who were also into language documentation. Just Princess of the Okay, back to Museveni's dictionary. He has this classification of ontology. He goes from the heavens, the earth, and cosmology. Then it comes down to earth, clouds, animals, humans. And so on and so on. So he has this classification. Unfortunately, there is no alphabetical index. And he once said, and he knows it, that we think that, uh, well, not everyone thinks like you, Mr. President, we cannot do it. Mm -hmm. So this is your intuition. Now, um, this is another one of my hobby horses that I quickly uh, throw in a bibliometric study. Uh, do we actually, as meta lexicographers, look at this type of dictionaries? Um, well, unfortunately, and here is the data I took um, Lexicos, which is the main journal for uh, Bantu and African languages on lexicography, and you see that it became okay, ever more popular until 2006, and since then has been losing in interest. And I use a number of keywords like analysis, logical, tutorials, thematic, and so forth to do that. 
A better way to actually look at that is to use a five year moving average. Yeah? And then you see that uh, the red line, the South Park has made it, uh, it really uh, goes down. Okay. But this may be meaningless if internationally there's also less attention to thematic dictionaries. So I uh, use the reference corpus of printed words with general lexicographic material. And here is the result. Lexicos is the red one that you already saw in the bottom. And internationally, there is ever more attention to this type of fiction, onomatological dictionaries. Now, uh, how does that translate? If you, you as a user go to a shop, a well stop shop, and want dictionaries. So we did a test on a single day. We went to for those from thousand to Mac, and we picked a number of dictionaries. And we really went from the children to the travel to the language acquisition and then the dictionary section to pick a few dictionaries. And we're going to look at the features of those very brief. Pick one, uh, and picture dictionary. A picture dictionary for English. Uh, it's bilingual, it has a number of themes, example sentences, even a grammar. Um, so this is actually close to a pure picture dictionary. This is an example from that dictionary and how they work through from image to the concepts and then the words. This is a difficult page, it deals with prepositions, not only to have to wait for and so forth. That part explain in any fiction, let alone picture. Another one, Arabic, English, a visual bilingual dictionary, also a picture one, but it uses photos, concepts and topics are shown, there are two indexes. Uh, the plate I'm going to show is with crockery and cutlery, and you see all these terms, but no definitions. The third one, a thematic dictionary for English, uh, so it works with themes and sub themes that are grouped in a logical order. There is also an index. Brief lexicographic treatment. For example, uh, the fields free time and hobby and game deals with leisure, recreation, relaxing. The bit of word class is a bit on pronunciation, combination of examples and translations. Uh, so two columns a column in English, a column in Dutch, and little blocks of meaning with examples. Then the most famous product, uh, everyone in Belgium and, and France and Switzerland and all the Francophone countries has both a Larousse and a Petit Robert on their desk. So this is the Petit Robert. In the title, it already tells you what it is. It's both alphabetical and analogical, in other words, thematic. How does it work? You can actually maybe go to an example, Agile, and you will see, and so that's the second entry on that page on the left. Uh, you will then see that an angle that Asia is also less than stupid deep, so that's the number of synonyms. At the bottom, you see contre or contraire, the opposite. Uh, so, antonyms, gauche, long, loop. So, this combines both, uh, it's an A to Z list, but it has uh, this, this onomatological feature throughout. Now, um, we want to move to the learner's section, and, and one of the latest entries in the learner's dictionary family is the Macmillan dictionary, but 10 years ago they decided to go only digital, so they don't print anymore, they have seen the future long ago, I'm going to use now the digital version of that. It combines a dictionary and a thesaurus, in other words, let's use the same word, agile, but now in English, if you start in the dictionary, and you see uh, the dictionary entry, but immediately that T can link you to the thesaurus. So if you click on that T, you go to the thesaurus part. So you get synonyms for the same thing. And if you want even more and more, you click the more, and that's the advantage of the digital world. You can really feel the T and get ever more data out of your digital product. You get now for that same thing, this whole list. Yeah? Because synonyms are not just synonyms, they depend on their context and others. Okay. Um, now, a little aside before we, we, we only praise the digital format, and this whole dictionary is indexed and hyperlinked. All dictionaries, all tools are. But then the, the problem is that most, if not all, are done blindly. When you then click on a hyperlink, you get all sorts of 
of uh, uninteresting material. You have, for example, the example Bailey became increasingly aggressive. If you click on the word Bailey, you go to a definition an area of land between etc. No, it's a person. Uh, the word becoming in the example, something like that prevent them from becoming stronger. If you click on becoming, you get the definition making you look attractive. Clearly, it is wrong because they did not dramatize the material. You just look at word things. Then there's even more info around it, but it doesn't help because then they say that Bailey is the old Bailey, which is a central criminal court in London, which now confuses even more. You get extra data, you can't click, can't click, can't click, but actually you learn nothing, you're just wasting your time. Uh, same problem with uh, verbal and uh, nominal uses of words, and uh, they, they mix them up, and so you, you get the wrong. Okay, one of the most involved things is the cobalt fishery, the one that revolutionized the field with lexicography in 1987. It's an alphabetical fiction, but more and more, and then you jump to it, it contains things like this pictures um, to explain certain concepts. And at the bottom here on that same page, you have the concept of economics explained in a simple way. And again, you see the field of economics with all the terms listed there. Okay. Uh, the awkward learners to know this. Oh, we had Macmillan, we had uh, Cobalt, now of course Oxford, now now in, in Japan, because this idea of learners victory was invented 100 years ago here in Japan. Um, well, it's a victory of synonyms that I took, so clearly the synonyms, synonyms are all logically, there are no pictures, but also, uh, well, I said no, there are few pictures, but few picture plates. Um, and then it has a number of indexes. Take, for example, a page uh, in that synonym dictionary. So, how does it work? Take the bottom left, magnificent. Uh, then you can see that magnificent is actually one of the terms on the scline going from impressive over grand to magnificent and synonyms there. So, you, you see how uh, the variation that exists to try to treat the mathematic aspects and not just a to z lexical analysis. Then you look at that on the same page, you continue, then have patterns and collocations going with each of these. Here's an example of a picture page. Sorry, picture page. You see how they do it. And they start from complete. And then you see uh, the words that belong to it and within each block say, uh, let's be nice. We're in Japan, resolve a conflict. And then you have the, the entries negotiate, negotiate, and resolve a piece and form the treasure. And then the different parts at that point. And so you see how the two are mixed. Then the digital version looks like this. Um, um, so again, hyperlinking, but be careful to mention the terms of hyperlinking. Now, what has this shown? That A to Z lexicons include ever more ornamentological features such as illustrations that the Rory are turned inside out and mimic A to Z pictures. And uh, at the same time, there are attempts by picture templates developers to include features that actually belong to synagogical or phonological dictionaries. So, why, why do we have these three types and the mixes? Everyone is trying to find the best approach to give you the, uh, the optimal information that you're looking for. That is why we came up with this concept, Kawai and myself, the alpha conceptual plus. Dictionary. So, alpha is, of course, the A to Z plus conceptual is the thematic part, and the plus is the multimedia that are possible in the digital world. So, if we say this <coughs> in a way, we, we are dealing with a triangle, and if you speak triangle, you're thinking of the triangle of Ogden and Richards, and the semiotic triangle or semantic triangle, which goes back to well, this is about 2,350 years ago, Aristotle, like most things in language, I won't go through this, you know this triangle, and but expressed in other terms, uh, it's a graphical form, say, the spelling of computer, which symbolizes the ID of a computer, which then refers to the non-linguistic entity, uh, being the computer itself, or a computer in the real world. Or if ISO terms, you have a concept and object and the term itself, and they like that permission, they're numbers, so they're given there. So 
how do you go from this to lexicography now? In lexicographic terms, the word and the concept levels correspond to semi zoological and all non zoological patients. While picture dictionaries or in the digital environment, any multimedia are the closest to the actual reference to the real world. Look at that uh, little picture at the top, word, semi zoological concept, non zoological reference, multimedia. Now, rather than I could have drawn a triangle as well, but I immediately went for something three dimensional because there is a positive multiplication effect of these three corners. Um, I claim the higher on that great tripod, the better your lexicographic product. Now, if I put all the dictionaries I've just talked about on that tripod, you can see that most are close to the corner or at least on the rim, combining say words with concept. And only two, two at the top, the Collins Coleman and the Oxford learners are rising above that. Sorry. Rising above the, the, the base, if you want. And so they start moving and by including images and other features of the other, and they rise above just being uh, one of the three. Course. So, what is that alpha conceptual? I think it's quicker to just see it to me and to Kawaya. It is actually the top of this. Combining the features of each, but doing it in a smart way, not just hyperlinking blindly. This is actually being undertaken right now by Theo Kawaya for Uganda. He, he, Use his own classification, change it, use his focus material, yeah, and um, assigns labels to each sense of his dictionary. But uh, uh, everything is fully really integrated. His picture plates are really integrated with what he says in the dictionary articles and then integrated with the phonological field. Seamless integration of the core work. And with an example, uh, what makes everything here is what you see on the right. Government is in the red, little box and age and people and quantity and so forth. And so this is the phonological level. The rest is made to that list. I haven't shown the picture, but I can of course easily be inserted as well. Okay, in the sense what I have just said. Okay, in contrast, what is now, of course, concept number one. What is now hub and spoke? Up and spoke is nothing other than this wheels of a bicycle. Okay? The hub is that center, and the spokes are the things that connected with the rim. Uh, that's the way like cycling around how kind of flat that the uh, sky. Now, actually, it is not fully true. People cheat you. We're not really talking about it. the spokes. The hub is the hub, that's true. But the spoke is actually the end point of each of those spokes. But you know that concept. You use it every day. Where is it most famous, the other spoke model? In aviation. Okay? So if you want to travel around Japan cheaply, you buy this pass for 11,000 yen. And what can you do? For 11,000 yen, you can choose any of these routes. Ah, you see, this is hub and spoke multiple times. And if you go, Island hopping, you actually have to go back to Osaka or back to Tokyo to go from island to island. There are no direct flights, at least not at that price of 11,000 yen. Up and spoke. They all use it in your end. When you, before you land, you open the magazine and the, in the airplane, the back pages always show how that spoke model. And of course, this variation by children now. Know very well, they have traveled and used it every day to get from the east to the west side, and they understand that centers with many connections are hubs that then lead to other spokes. One of them being the starting point for us, Oshiage at the Sky Tree, going all the way to Tama here on Dutch. Okay, hub and spoke models. Okay, bringing this to lexicography now. Uh, it was introduced at the Eurex conference in 96 by Lee Martin and Tom. And they, uh, he's Dutch, he's Belgian, well, he's Belgian, but he worked in the Netherlands. 
die komen onkeerbare, bilinguale, lexicale databanken. I said because it is known as aggregation only, only, which stands in English for reversible bilingual lexical databases. It was developed in 94 by a Dutch company and it uses a number of parameters that are underlined conceptual equivalence, automatic contrast, family status, and lexical status to basically decide on how to link all the lexical units. They claim it's a non directional but linkable bilingual database. And in the end, it will be possible to be linked with languages outside of the original pair. How do they do it? Well, they made make this Turkish Dutch, Arabic Dutch, Hungarian Dutch, Polish Dutch, Italian Dutch, Swedish, and many more. The core is, of course, Dutch. They made a reference database for Dutch. If they have different to the start Netherlands, RPN, about 50,000 Dutch words with linguistic information. Still exists, can be found. Now, that concept that was applied uh, in the Low Countries was developed for South Africa after 94. Suddenly, South Africa became democratic, and of course, now what? 94, 95, Masha Maite yeah, developed in his MA, the Hub and Sport model, with the idea let's do this with 11 official languages, the new official languages in South Africa. A lady who wrote about it also in the journal of Lexicos, we applied it in order to do and she then two of the official languages in South Africa. So, how does it work? It's very basic. This is his example for television, and you have in your database uh, the equivalents for each of the language pairs, and then these four parameters and the lexical status, value status, pragmatic context, and this uh, conceptual equivalence. Okay, here is the basic. Uh, it's also a long Telugu chain, it is and Telugu Shiri between Northern Sufi and Chivanda. Then here he gives another example where actually the English doesn't exist. Asa and Asa in the Bantu languages for bring sacrifice to an ancestral spirit. You can clearly see this is a written for academia. This is invented data because think of it. This cannot be your English starting point. It doesn't exist. But, um, this remains true. You have a hub, which is English. You have a spoke, Northern Sufi, another spoke, Banda. And once you have that, theoretically, you can also make the Northern Sufi Banda and Banda in the Sufi side via English, but never actually the And with the need to show English, the hub and spoke model. Of two, now you can expand this to three, five, eleven, one hundred, any number of languages, as long as you have the data. And uh, you just heard about a lot of data, yes. And as long as you put in the data, you can do that for any document and database. If you want to know more, there was a special issue of IGL in 2007 on this OMB and uh, all that goes around. Okay. But it's actually a bit more complex. And here's a nice example uh, by Lee Bagdad in that special edition. If in Dutch you have in written form, Ross, Pacht, and a ribbon, if you have no idea what that means, now you need to jump to the image at the bottom. It's things like a steed, a horse, a knight, and a cavalier. You already see the field, right? Now, the problem, of course, of uh, Going across languages, the state horse at the top part, it can be both the animal field and the chess piece, the skak. Now that doesn't map nicely on the English, and that is shown with the dotted lines and the straight lines. So between languages, you have well known bilingual lexicography, the conversions and diversions. Now, if you want to make a hub and spoke 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 model, this actually complicates the whole. And it's, if you want everything to be reversible, you have to code that in your data as you compile the okay. Now we come to the meat of the matter, right? We came up with this idea to combine uh, uh, our forces and to use the Bantu vocabulary series. Which have been produced here in Ilka 
we can now have a look at the views again. And as we've seen, I guess from what I've said, uh, uh, I used to be in South Africa as well, together with David Jockey, the software that we developed for that. Now, if you go to the website of Ilka, you know, one of the things you see is that indeed they have Asian and African lexicons. Thanks to the uh, talk we just heard, this is a screenshot from the talk we just had, um, we now know that. Uh, there's another. Ah, okay. And we now know that a single person collected data for all these languages. Um, and they all the other full band here in the whole potential field from north to south and west to east, which is indeed incredible. Uh, I had never seen it, but now I see it also for the first time. We see here um, the handwritten sheets that were filled in, in the field for Hedeo, Manika, Puja, and Tua. Uh, this was, uh, we were told, uh, one of the grammatical notebooks where other data was collected. Now, we also learned, I showed him in a different order, uh, from uh, the discussion we just had, that all this was done for 131 family languages, and that he always used the same questionnaire, exactly 2,359 items. Unfortunately, this is not. It is very untrue. Because if this was true, this would have been a very good job to implement what we just said, marrying up a consensual plus with an open spoke model. Actually, once we started looking at the data, which unfortunately got a bit late, uh, it turned out that you never even reach 2359, and you have some of the, uh, the list that are barely a thousand uh, items long. So there is no, I don't know why, we eh? should investigate, but even in the published material, you don't have that much. Two, the ontology used is also not fixed. So the numbering system within it is not correct. This is a problem because you want a hub. Theoretically, your hub is a number, just an ID. So that's say, compared to a Guthrie code, that G42, G42 D is always Swahili, but it's a code. Or L31A is always Chiluba, it's a code. But the number changes from lexical to lexical. Okay, you haven't seen all 131, there may be two equals, but you can't use them. So, firstly, we have to choose a hub. And what is common among them? Unfortunately, it's again English. We would have preferred not having to do that. Some lexica have Swahili, some have French in addition, but it's not consistent, so you can't use that as a hub. So instead of using an imaginary hub, an edda, <laughs> uh, we have to use actually a language which is then on top of not even an language. So we had to choose. Well, we did three really choose. I think uh, Daisuke choose for us. It's a corporation. And in the end, uh, it was a bit hard to get all the data, but there is this series of 11 uh, classified vocabularies, as, as was mentioned just before. Eh? And of those 11, who are on a real time pressure, we in the end got the data in a useful format for nine of them, the other draft. Okay, so they are listed from one to eleven. Now, to give you an example of the first one, this is the classified vocabulary of the Kenyan language. If you skip the introductory parts, and, uh, the first uh, overview that you get. Uh, is actually the classification, the ontology used in this vocabulary. Mm -hmm. So it starts with the human body, then you have a block, illness, a block, clothing, a block, eating, dwelling, and so forth. And within each block, go back to the first one, first a block on the head, then the body, then the arm, then the leg, inside the body, and so on and so on. 
Now we had hope that this classification then runs through all 131 or at least 11 or 9. But it's not good. Say you now go to the hat, the first hat, then it starts with hat, go to brain, okay, hair, white hair, baldness, that's what the hair is from. Right. Starts with me. wrinkles, eye, eyebrow, and so forth. You see how right? you can link this back to the nose we just saw, and taken in the field like the Swadesh, but now thematically up to 2000 concepts, concepts, and no more students. You basically show. And often, at least uh, when we do fieldwork in the soda, we show and we show pictures in the picture aspect now, the multimedia. We show pictures of the thing so that you don't even have to use another language. You show, you point at something, and you hope to hear what it is in the language. To be sure that you have, a, and of course, it's a bandy language. It's when it's a noun, you try to have both singles and plurals, and it's uh, when it's. Um, Say uh, then also if you go through all the positions, uh, so there are a few uh, of the usual traits that you do to have the full paradigm. Very important. Unfortunately, as uh, you will also see, the class system used, I don't know if you can read it, had for U3 2 and U3 10. So this is not the class system as we know it. This is another issue that we will have to, if we want to continue with this, clean up if we want to bring the data. Uh, to date, if you want, in a comparative uh, way. So he has this, I don't know why, a rather idiosyncratic way to label some uh, things. Now, thanks to a uh, person here, Mr. Kanji will uh, interact with me at the end, and that's for us actually, also the day uh, we've got the same material, not in book form, but in electronic form and file. Five known as a JSON file. So we'll be on top of it. Then uh, and the, the ontology actually follows. Uh, this is what we want the, the code. Uh, see ID1, human body, ID2, illness, ID3, clothing, and so forth. And then within such a, um, after that come uh, the real, if you want, articles, dictionary articles, if I'm compared to lexicography, where then you have had. With the translations in this case for we to the we began. So this was done for us. Big thanks to actually also the team of Daisuki uh, for doing this. Uh, so it's really a corporation. It's a big job to do that because you may have seen that even though they were published, all the tone marks were added manually. I am sure you struggled and suffered. Uh, you're of course not responsible for the errors now, but uh, it was definitely a very big job to transfer this to Jason. Now, uh, we can't, we only got this uh, two days ago, so we worked over many nights between other tools that I moved in Japan. On the left, I'm talking about David Chapri. The other side was me in my pajamas. We worked through nights. Uh, in the beginning, it was not yet JSON. We were just looking at the data and trying to understand how to deal with it. Um, where are we there? One hour and 26 minutes. Some of our chat sessions were 14 hours long. Uh, we really started noticing what we already said that the numbering across the language are not consistent. We started making notes after a while. We realized there's no point of keeping track of that because there are way too many cases. We have to do it a different approach. But we thought, oh, we found an error. Huh? But it's, it was not the case. It was something totally different. Okay, then uh, we, we start uh, trying to uh, handle the data. This is uh, part of the JSON file that we, we had to start with on the first day. And uh, I would like to bring this in. This in. Uh, last week, Monday, I talked about chat GPT and lexicography. Um, given I'm not talking for, for the lexicographers, I uh, may steal our ideas, but we actually really use that tool to help us uh, develop interfaces, write code, uh, just speed up our work. So here you see an example. It is complex, write the C++ Alpha class and function called PC parse JSON to doc tree that uses rapid JSON to parse an input standard string to recursively convert the JSON into an in memory parse doc structure in which each JSON object becomes an XML element. That's something to do with brackets, etc. etc. Et Very complex human commands to the chat box. Within seconds, chat GPT starts writing your code. And then even explains why it does certain things. 
Then David Joffrey, that we made a says that was good, chat GPT, but can you change the PC node graphic to a pointer PC node and new PC node and wrap the function PC parse JSON to the load and one and one? Sure, says the chat GPT. Here's the updated implementation. And there it is. Is it perfect? No, just like I showed last Monday, it's not that perfect history either. But can it be used? Have you just saved an hour of programming? Oh, yes. We take it, we correct it, yeah. and so on. Just showing you that huh? there are many people who still don't believe in ChatGPT. The future is here. We're already using it every day. So we used it. We used it to, in the end, bring the lexica that we just heard into our dictionary writing software. Yeah. And this is a first attempt um, where you see uh, some of the data with some of the codes. We kept the codes for now, huh? so it's uh, having uh, 61 for dog, huh? dog, less, and which language was it? It was as test. Uh, we come back to it. But uh, this uh, proves that the code that ChatGPT just wrote indeed managed to take the data, the JSON data, and to bring it after a few tweaks. Directly in the dictionary writing system. Um, very important given we are talking in an onomatological dictionary, and you have there in the center the categories, uh, because we need to be marrying A to Z with concepts. Yeah, so we have human body, head, body, arm, and on, and then illness, illness, mental disorder, injury. Uh, the same things coming back because we will need, of course, to keep track of. The original was on a methodological structure, even though we bring it into a dictionary writing system. As an aside, uh, it is true that um, we hesitate for a long time whether we would use TL term, which is a terminology package, or TLEX, which is meant to make dictionaries. Uh, I won't go into the details, but there's a big difference between the two. Uh, we in the end decided. It's actually still more lexicography than terminology because of what we saw with the horse examples from Willy Martin. This divergence and conversion. It is not terminology. We're talking about words, not terms. So we use mm -hmm. Um And here, another example of how smart G, uh, GPT uh, chat is. You, you can even type errors and it doesn't give uh, anything about it. Can set handle, note, loop. Title, matching, title, strings, and then it corrects it in the answer. Yes, set can handle, no line, matching, etc. You know, programmers are fast, they don't want to type, they don't do spell checkers, and again, ChatGPT even understands broken English. And it gets you the yeah. answer. Okay, at some point, we start managing to get all the data in, and of course, in the beginning, it was uh, hard to, to, to <laughs> look at. And we were really both of us scratching our heads, taking a random screenshot, um, and not understanding how to go further. Then we developed the idea of how to classify it. Um, but at this point, if it works, instead of moving through the solution, but let me just point out you see at the top of the Felix the different onomatological fields already appearing, and one. Two, three, all the way to 23, these are the 23 main categories, and so on, where we try to marry the A to Z with the onomatological. So we adapted the software, which new, new code that was written uh, to be able to do that. So if David is with us, perhaps I should just give over to you. So, David, can you share your screen? David? So that means how I Okay. At the bottom right, you have David Joffrey, and I think you already see the screen. And you test your sound. I will stop my sound. Or no. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so roughly, um, how much time do I have? Well, we have um, 30 minutes. Sorry. 15. 15. Mm, sorry. Okay. Okay. So I'd just yeah, I'd like to show you the um yeah, firstly this is how the um the data looks in um presently. This was one of the interim steps. 
bringing the data from the um, so the JSON, bringing the JSON files in. As Maurice just the conversion that we pointed out, we brought it in into this interim format, which resembles the uh, Intilux, and then I've done some processing on it in Tlux to combine the, the different parts into the combined um, English section with English as the hub language and the other languages as the spoke language. So we have a new combined Tlux uh, database here with um, this is still, still putting some finishing touches on this. So this is still slightly a work in progress, but um, yeah, it's looking good. So the, it's roughly 6,000 something English entries that may change slightly depending how we process certain things. And um, the total entries, or well, the total entries from the JSON we imported is around 19,000. Um, and then um, we uh, to Shane, we can also add these. Um, Maybe, if I may, that's long. Yeah. Say, for example, this one. So, what do we see? Local super. Can you see? Yes. So um, can you explain the different windows of Tlux? So on the left and the three and what you see and, and how what what other body is actually shown? This is data from the nine digits. So go so back to the top. So okay, I'll perhaps say on the left we have the lemma list. So that is in lexicon all the entries in your dictionary. But given we were through English, we now don't have two thousand. We have what is the digit here? Six thousand? Six thousand. Yeah, so you see how it expands because, of course, the things are not, not consistent. If you look at all the variants that 2003 uh, exploded three times, then in the middle section, there is a tree view. Yes, stand there. Uh, so, this is how each dictionary article is built. In this case, an article was built by basically bringing in each lexicon, it is modular. So, we brought in nine. If we now have, we heard 130 lexica in Yoneda's <laughs> talk. Uh, if, if we have more additional format, we can just, we have the import script now, add the 10, add the 11, add, it's like sp collecting Swadesh lists, you just keep adding. So this is ready. Then at the bottom is where normally lexicon is type in the boxes. We don't need that because the data exists. Mm -hmm. Of course, we could collect it and if we clean it up, we have to do that. And on the right is a typical what you see is what you get. Imagine a digital dictionary, and it would look like this. But so an article, say, not look, just stop anyway, yeah, to be acid, right? That's the English because verbs always are false. You want to go to the body? Fine, but baby, baby, hold on. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> just stop. Go back. Anyway, but keep it steady. Thank you. So if it's yeah, body, there you see actually the end for from one to. Don't move, don't move, baby. I want to count the languages. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so all nine languages have body. Yeah, and in, don't mark it, I can't read anymore, thank you. When you, it was the one I had read, remember? Oh, who, who's more? I can't see that. Oh, 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 and in. And then for Koya, Lungu, Lenge, Ninama. So this this parrot's data that used to be in nine different books on your shelves is now automatically together. What the, what the, the codes? Ah, these are the codes I explained. Uh, class two and class ten. You ask, you no, ask. No, the eight, the numbers are these are the, the, the numbers that in the classification from when this was number one, two, one. But if you then see the numbers for the next language were a bit different because it read each lexicon uh, uh, a different number of items. No, but there is also a 572. Yeah, that's ah, that's, that's the, the, the Guthrie code. Eh? They are wrong. Well, that's the Guthrie code that we got. <laughs> or the numbers that we got. Oh, this is the, uh, you know, uh, 
identification number of uh, yeah. Yuka publication. It's not okay. No. Sorry for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, thanks for the clarification. I need then think about what it is. I just assumed that I did it wrong. But there'll be too much in Cameroon, that's an okay. <laughs> and Luba in Cameroon, okay. No. Um, but you see, this is also sometimes a problem of, of uh, developing software. You stop being a linguist, you just want, you, you think about models and you develop a tool. You're not, and it's very difficult, you're not trying to correct data. We see problems all the time, typographical content and so on. But you have to stay clear for, for now. First, prove the concept. Then we we'll see if it's useful and if you continue, and then you will ask. Uh, a bunch of uh, assistance to be about. But right now, it's about the digital content. So here you see how the semi as uh, this is a normal A to Z list now, but organized chronologically, and of course, you can bring in pictures physically as well. I'll let now David continue from this because this is now on his computer. It's also on my computer already. I bought it 20 minutes ago. Uh, but the good thing about the digital world is that with a few clicks, we go to the next step. Yeah, all right. So we've I've also published this online using the um, um, well, it's not a public URL yet, just to a, um, a testing address where we uh, have it online um, using the uh, integrated online publishing, which again works live. We can update that any time. And then, um, so this is the uh, so the address is dictionaryq.com slash inca. Yeah, that's where <laughs> dictionaryq.com slash inca. See that? that is where we have now put the, the nine that were import, and it's already live if you have that address. But Google won't find it, there's enough endpoints to it. That's our search engine. Google shouldn't know about JIT. <laughs> it's not linked anyway. But um, yeah, so we have a regular search, but one of the interesting things that um, we've added now as well, I want to show is that um, follows on from what Maurice was just talking about. Is, um, all right, this is just a norm. A normal, this is re the regular search function of search for NDA, NDA and it shows results in um, you know, various languages, Nilamba and, um, and um, Shambhala. But um, yeah, one, one of the, oh yeah, we also have the, um, these images are online as well. So if I search for body, I also see this image. Um, but one of the, let's just clear these results. Um, so one of the ideas, if you have the data with um, English as your hub language and the other language as the spoke language, is that in theory, you can build a, a search from, you know, from any of these languages to any of the other languages hub languages are going through the the um the uh, hub, yeah uh, going through the yeah the, the hub language the spoke languages going through the hub languages to do to build a search from any language to um any of the other languages and um so this is one of the features that we're we're adding is to be able to select to search um, in a particular direction from a certain language. Um, so I can just, if I repeat that search now, um, if I do the search now, I will get um, zero results because I have searched in when you, um, if I search in same search in um, Shambhala, oh no, wait, let me show, wait, um, actually, the one I was testing just now, Le Fumo in um, Lange. So, um, so it's basically showing you now, I've searched for Le Fumo and um, it shows us two results. 
um, and it shows us that this is our direction of search. We've searched in the Langer for Nkoya results and um, it just highlights them as well. So we have um, the, so the blue is showing um, the language I searched in and the green is highlighting the languages that, um, or vice versa, sorry, the languages that my results are in. Yeah, David, this is of course amazing. That's hard to read, uh, probably not for linguists. Can you see? This is great because you keep all the original data. It's like what we did uh, with the index for the Swahili dictionary. But theoretically, if you now want to make it super user friendly, you could even say if you want two languages, you suppress all the other languages. You just see these two, and then you have the real head and stroke ID, like I said. Uh, yes, can you write the, the, that one. hasn't been done yet. Okay. Yeah. This is it. So here you have, I, I don't know, it's a lot to perhaps uh, internalize, but you now have the Alpha Conceptual Plus working on this old data from the field, from Yukawa, and you have a hub and spoke extendable to any number of languages. The database is already live, the scripts have been written. So any JSON file you now start sending, it is kick it kick to end. However, like I also said, and this is important, there are problems. Uh, I just saw an, an entry, uh, what was it? I live in Makerere. Clearly, it doesn't belong there. So well, how, how come? Well, clearly this was also a prompt used by Yukawa, probably in Uganda then, uh, to get the translation from. So if you really want to use it, and pretend it's a real vocabulary, it needs cleanup. It will need cleanup, which of course is not the task of, of uh, nor David nor myself. So we have refrained from doing that. So if you now play with it and you see funnies, we are not really responsible for, for the contents. It was just about showing that it is possible. We didn't know. It's. Uh, you want to say something about the, the decisions we made on uh, how to go about Combining all the data, David. Uh, yeah, um, I do want to just point out that yes, there's no reason you we can't you can't um, be adding more data to this. Yes, which would be very interesting, and there are a lot of very interesting things you can do with this further. Um, but yes, there are some inconsistencies from the original data that. Um, should ideally get some attention, like there's more things like this. Why is the, this? Uh, but there's a uh, principal wife. Up, up, I guess that's, yeah, that's cultural. Um, principal wife, yeah. Um, yeah, so we will also be adding the um, Swahili and the French. Some of the kids, there was English, sorry, there was um, in addition French or Swahili, depending probably on the region that the field work was done. And so you could use that, but right now this is not part, so it is part of yes. the translation, what we would call the translation equipment. So if we would really want that, we could try to write a script to extract it, but given it was, the data was not nicely uh, conceived like this, there will be double errors. So it will need to clean up if you start adding that level as well. So sometimes it's a trilingual or even quadrilingual vocabulary list that should be source already. Now we pretend it's always bilingual. That's one of the issues we also know. Then probably we'll have to suppress the numbers. Uh, there's no, let's say, pregnancy 6392 at this point. There's no use for it anymore that can easily be suppressed. But at the same time, we want to keep it because with these numbers, you can regenerate the original list. It's a numbering system for each of the languages. And that's the advantage of the database. There's always more in the database than what we use in any of the outputs, whether it's printed or digital. There's far more behind it. Our dishes are corpus driven, so there's a lot of corpus input that you never put with there. So here the course could be one of those levels. 
So can it be expounded? Can it be corrected? Yes, but I think we have to go back to what we just discussed with Yolanda. We have to go back to the, the people who now uh, inherited Yukawa's uh, data and ask for all the permissions before we continue that. Actually, we don't even have permission, I think, to put this online. Mm -hmm. Or if we have, we leave it. Uh -huh. But these are the issues that we haven't discussed. We just uh, mm -hmm. wanted to show, wow, it's the first time we do this. So then, even 10 years ago, or is it now more, 20, uh, when they wanted to do it for South Africa, no one did it. And I can inform you that for Dutch, there is no Spanish Norwegian dictionary that uses that system. All academic papers have made claims. We needed this project, the cooperation between Bandida and Africa, to make it a reality. This is the first time. So, David, thank you. I'm very happy. Here we are. We've done it. You've done it. Yep. Yeah. I think we, we leave because we have to interact also with uh, Mr. Kanji. So, he will also uh, come online. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can you? Can you? I think we are. Yeah, but uh, for now, I mean, I would like to say, you know, the presentation by the movie. Really, I don't know because you know, this is the you know, first, uh, you know, uh, thing that we had this kind of, you know, the done to, you know, compare the dictionary. Uh, based on the hub and spoke model, this is the first, uh, you know, uh, 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 thing that we had this kind of thing. So this is really fruitful achievements of this project, I think. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. Very much. <laughs>